Hello everybody, this is Straining Gamer back to conclude round four. And we are concluding round four with Group I, the group that seems to have all the one-sided matches in. But, of course, round three completely shook this group up. So yes, up first, we're going to see Morslet going up against Marissa Kurosami. Dark Ash Star taking a crack at Asterion. And then, what could be a knockout match at the bottom between Cryonova and Xelos Ares. And yes, put it this way, if Mors and Astarion win their matches, then this does become a knockout match. And in fact, both of these two could be knocked out today, should they end in a draw. And we haven't had a draw in this tournament yet, so you never know. We had one last time, didn't we? Against Arctic Warriors and, da and Danex Tactical, I believe? We might get a draw this time. We'll just have to see. Right, enough about Dilly Dalian. Let's get on with the first matchup. Right, the Olen in the red corner for Mors, we got a Yangchungosaurus. This Yangchungosaurus has been very effective for Moore so far. We saw it give, them a two, give her a 2-0 lead against Crownover, but of course we all know what happened after that, didn't we? And it does have the type advantage over this Fukui Raptor, so I wouldn't be surprised if Moore has a 2-0 lead again. Although I, although I doubt it, actually, because Marissa does have a Water Dinosaur in second, so I doubt the Yang will give Moore a 2-0 lead this time, but you never know. This Fukui Raptor is basically the same as the Neo Venator, so I fully expect the Yang Chungosaurus to kill it. Quite comfortably. But you never know. Marissa may get the luck that Crownover didn't. Okay, maybe not. But as I said, as, lo as long as Mauls keeps going paper or scissors, you know, the Fukui Raptor can't do any damage, basically. Does have the Dino Illusion, though, which has been triggered. Here's the tie. Burning Dash is going to be triggered. Well, there goes Dino Illusion. Moore's off to a strong start here. Marissa suffering her first defeat of the tournament last time out against Dark Ash Star. But still has a good heap of points, which should take them through anyway. Ooh, although Moore's has got off the fire cannon. Can Moors take advantage of the type advantage? Well, so far she is. Oh, look at that! However, Dino Illusion has been triggered yet again. Well, a tie would be brilliant right now for Moors. Ah, there we go. There's a tie. Fukui Raptor going down. Moors getting exactly what she wanted there. A 1-0 lead. However, how long will it last? Because this is Super Kamarasaurus we're talking about here. And it's capable of ripping the Yang Chungosaurus a new one. But Marissa has yet to get a hit in this match, so can Moors extend her lead with the Yang Chungosaurus, or can the Kamarasaurus pull it back for Marissa Kurosami? Ooh, well, there's their first hit of the match. Awaken mode on two, I believe, for the camera. Let's just double check. Yes, it is. Oh, it's a crit. Big damage coming Yang's way. And now we're for the Awaken mode. Well, there's the hit. Well, kind of wasted, to be honest. A tie would have been better, but here we go. Marissa Kurosami pulling it back. Right, as for Moors' second dino, it is Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus. Well, we've seen how effective it can be for other people. <coughs> Ghidorah. We'll see how effective it can be for Moors in this matchup. The camera's health has been halved, remember? So, Moors still has the lead, but Marissa has pulled it back. Ooh, a Futaba cannon! Marissa is pulling it back. This probably won't be enough to give her the, give her the lead, but it will be close. Splishy splash. Well, this will put Marissa in the driving seat. The momentum has swung in this match. Oh, another tie. Oh, momentum has definitely swung in this match. Marissa Kurosame getting a 2-1 lead. 
Alright, as for Moses' third dino, it is Proserolophus. Well, so far, this is a good result for Crown Over and Zalos. Because they, they don't want Moors to win and pull away. They need to keep them within touching distance. Because, well, put it this way, the best those two are going to get is third. And if Moors gets a win here, then that will tighten her grip on third place. Well, it doesn't look like Moors is going to win. Look at this from the camera. Futaba Cannon coming in again. Wow, Moors just cannot buy a hit at the minute. Is Mirissa going to get a bonus point win? Oh, it's a tie. Finally, Moors gets a hit. This metal wing might be enough. Well, should be enough to kill the camera. Yeah, I think it'll be enough. Whoosh. Yeah, there goes the camera, but look at the damage it's done. Marissa Kurosame also guaranteeing themselves at least a losing bonus point should they lose this match. However, I suspect this Pachycephalosaurus will get the job done for Marissa here. Haven't seen too much of it, to be honest. All of Marissa's wins so far have been bonus point wins. Oh, yep, yeah, there's the crit. Is it enough? No, it's not. Admiral Garden has been triggered. The losing bonus point might not be secured yet. Okay, there it is. There's the win for Marissa Kirasami that will take them through to the last 32 round. Well, it should. They're on 12 points. It should be enough. But yep, yeah, that will do it for Marissa now. A safe passage to the last 32 round for them. As for Moors, well, they're just going to have to do it all on the last round, aren't they? But that is also a good result there for Crown Over and Zalos, as it keeps Moors within touching distance. Now then, on to our second match of this session, which is another important game between Dark Ash Star and Astarion. Right then, in the red corner for Danix Tactal, it is Metria... No, not Danix Tactal, Dark Ash Star. It is Metriacanthosaurus, and well, we've seen how effective this beast can be. And it is pretty much the main reason why Dark Ash Star has three wins out of three. A win for Dark Ash Star will take them through to the last 32. However, it will have the tight disadvantage against this Decreosaurus. Ooh, how big could that be? And Astarion got off the mark last round, getting a crucial, crucial win to keep their tournament hopes alive. Well, it was a good win. It was a really good win. And a win here will really strengthen their grip on the top three. And it'll be important as well, given Moors' defeat. Ooh, well, oh, yeah, they blundered. Oh, yeah, the Met is blunder type as well, but the, the Creosaurus has move breaker. And that's just the start Astarion wants. It's a tragic sphere. Oh, look at that damage! Mightily impressive, the Metriacanthosaurus yet to get going. Oh, it's a tie. No interruption. Another tie. Yeah, there it is. There's the heat eruption. The first heat eruption of this match. Will it be the... Well, it might be the... Probably will be the last because the Met is on low health. But Dark Ash Star getting off the hit. Burnies. Ooh, Metriacanthosaurus getting another hit off. No technique boost though, because that move has been denullified. Well, despite having the tight disadvantage, is Metriacanthosaurus giving Dark Ashta of the lead? Astarion playing catch up yet again. Although, not a bad dinosaur to play catch up with, the Tajongasaurus. The powerhouse, the king of the crits. Well, it won't need a crit to kill Metricamphosaurus, put it that way. Has the sand trap as well. 
お前たちの力見せてもらおう本気で行かせてもらうよおおザクレッダーガシュタイヤテゲンプルンアウェイウィザメトリアカンファソーラスおっでぃザテックブースト coming back into action But Metriocamphosaurus is going down, so Dark Ashtar will not have a 2-0 lead. Tajongasaurus even in the score there, getting off some elemental power. However, as for Dark Ashtar's second die note, it is an Armatus. Well, <laughs> will we see Spectral Armor in this match? Both of our combatants have Sand Trap in their moveset and Earthquake as well. Interesting. So ties could be key in this matchup. Oh, it's one tie. No sand trap though. Oh, his armatus getting the first hit though. Big damage. Well, actually, no, a pitiful amount of damage. However, could that be a turning point? It's an earthquake. And with the elemental power as well, this is going to do a lot of damage. Oh, look at that! Elemental power coming in as well, and Astarion has the lead. Oh, 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 no sand trap though, no sand trap. Ooh, well, couldn't hold on to the lead. Armatus getting off the mole attack, which will finish off the Tajonosaurus and give Dark Ashtar the 2 1 lead. Ooh, the Spectral Armor is looming. However, as for Astarion's third dino, it is Ankyceratops. Awaken mode on 3. Oh, Super Ankyceratops. Sorry. Awaken mode on 3. Of course, it needs to get a head off to kill the Armatus. Otherwise, it could be Spectral Armor time. And actually, for the sake of getting a good screenshot, I hope Armatus gets the Spectral Armor. Oh, it's not! Lightning Strike coming in clutch, finishing off Armatus and evening the score. Well, we're back where we started, even Stevens. Right, as for Dark Ashtar's third dino, it's a Uteraptor. This Uteraptor, well, is Uteraptor against Ankyceratops here? Does have the Dino Illusion for protection? So, I, I don't know now. I think the Awaken Mode is going to be the deciding factor here. But we might not even get to Awaken Mode. You never know. Oh, oh my glasses! Not with a crit from the Uteraptor! Just once. Oh, it's a tie. Ooh, another hit from Uteraptor. Could this be the win for Dark Ashtar? Whee! Boosh. Oh, it might. Well, actually, no, I don't think it will. This won't kill Ankyceratops, but look at that. The losing bonus point secured. And the win secure. Dark Ashtar making it 4 out of 4. Although, definitely had to do it the hard way. Astarion did put up the fight. But it's 4 wins out of 4 for Dark Ashtar. And a safe passage to the last 32. Again, a good result there for Crown Over and Zalos. Keeps that third position, third place slot within touching distance. Now, speaking of the devils, it's time for Crown Over to have a crack as they lost. Right, the O then. The match that could be the most, well, the most important match in this round, in my opinion. Given the first two results as well. In the Brett corner for Crown Over, it's a Neil Venator. I haven't seen this guy do, well, anything really, it's just died. But, for once, it doesn't have the type disadvantage against its opponent's first time, which is a Ceratosaurus. A little ratty thing here. Can this Ceratosaurus shine for Zalos? Well, this is a massive game. 
The loser here will be teetering on the edge of elimination. The winner will give themselves a real fighting chance. And in fact, the bonus point win for either of these two will get them in the top three, given the, the, given the results earlier. So massive gain for both. Oh, what a start from Cryonova! It's a crit off the bat! Oh, oh, we're starting with tie. We're starting with a tie there. Another tie. Cryonova will mind this, though. Chip away at Astorato's health. Oh, it's a Mayfly, and no, it's kind of a waste, but at least you got it off. And for the first time ever in this tournament, I think, Cryonova is going to have a 1-0 lead. They lost yet to get going in this match. Well, going to need this Tajongasaurus to pull its weight here. It does have Rock Roll, I might add, and it is a lethal type one, so it will definitely, it can definitely do some damage. But look at that, maximum power. Zaylos can easily come back into this match. So Cryonova can't rest easy yet. Ooh, ooh, it's a tie. Well, I'm sure Cryonova would love a Cyclone right now to take advantage of all these ties. Oh, speak of the devil, there's the Cyclone. Cryonova tightening his grip on this match. Ooh, but a crit from the Tajongo. Oh, wow, it killed it. <laughs> well, there's the power of the crit. The king of the crits decimating the Neo Veneto and you're bringing it back for Zaylos. Right, that's for Cryonova's second I know, is it? Kakirodontosaurus. The rock roller has been triggered, so Cryonova's going to have to be really careful here. Otherwise, that rock roller could swing this match's momentum in Zaylos's favour. I think that's their first match of hit of the tournament match. It's a crit from the Kaka! You gotta risk it for the biscuit. Crown over risked it and it's paid off. It's Fire Cannon. Fire Cannon. Boosh. Oh wow. If Volcano Burst. Oh no, Volcano Burst. If Volcano Burst have activated there, Crown over would have had a 2 1 lead. Oh well, there's a 2 1 lead anyway. But the Kaka instead took a little bit of damage. Okay, though, do not count Zaylos out yet, though, as we have the Black T-Rex. And this beast, well, we saw what it did in the first round against Dark Ashtar, almost bringing it back from the brink. And it doesn't have as much of a mountain to climb this time, so do not count that. Do not count Zaylos Aries out yet. Wow, look at it, the Black T-Rex towering over the car car. Absolutely, well, a lot bigger than this in the anime. <laughs> but you know, it, it it wouldn't fit if it if it if they used its actual size, it wouldn't fit. So we just have to settle for this. Ooh, look at this from the car car tech boost maxed up as well, so we should see some volcano burst action. Nope, because it's crown over and they have no luck in this tournament. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll take back what I just said there, because it looks like it's going to be a bonus point win for Cryonova. Boosh! Oh, oh, wow, it killed it instantly. I wasn't expecting that. Look at that. A bonus point win for Cryonova. Makes you think how crucial that win against Moors in round three is. Cryonova thrusting themselves back in the group stage and now has a real fighting chance of getting out of this group. Right, that is a fine way to conclude round four, ladies and gentlemen, so we'll have a look at the table and we can end the session. Well, Group I is definitely shaken up, isn't it? Dark Ashtar, Marissa Kurosame, safely through to the last 32, with their 12 points there. Cryonova storming into third place with our big bonus point win over Zaylos. 
on seven points. And then you have Mors and Asta in, on six points, Astarion on four points, and poor old Zalos on three. So, yeah, wow. Group I looking very competitive. And as like I said, this place is up for grabs. So, yeah, well, Zalos has a really tough task because they, they'll pretty much need to win 3 0. Actually, let's have a look at the fixtures. So it'd be they'll be taking on Marissa next round and five versus six. Ooh, ooh, actually, yeah, yeah. I think Zelos is out because if Astarion beats Cryonova, they go to seven points. Yeah, Zelos would ha no, no. Zelos is still in it. They would just have to win three nil. Like anything other than a three nil win will eliminate Zelos series. Of course, then they would need other results to go their way. So yes, round five we will conclude with Zelos going up against Marissa. Dark Ashtar taking on Morslet, and then Cryonova going up against Asterion. So yes, Group I, well, third place, still up for grabs as we move on to the final round of Group Games. Wow, this is exciting, isn't it? So yeah, Ooh, so exciting, so enticing. Round five, we will conclude the group stage. And yes, how this will work, well, look for, vid look for tournament videos every single day for a week. Starting with Group A, going all the way down to Group I. So I got loads to do, haven't I? <laughs> so yeah, hope you enjoyed. That concludes Round 4, ladies and gentlemen. On to the final round of Group Stage matches, where we will obviously start with Group A. And until then, this is Strange Gamer, signing out.